Hey everybody, I received some feedback that some people wanted a little bit of extra support in accessing peer-reviewed journals because they haven't had as many classes or experiences in their undergraduate career that they remember how to do that or can kind of follow that process or they may be a little rusty on it. So I thought I would do a quick video to show you how to get access to those. I realize this page might change a little bit each semester as the library page changes, but this will give you the kind of overall process um, that you should be able to count on. So I'm just on the UF homepage. Um, you can go to UF libraries from here. I'm just typing this into the search bar and you'll receive some results that take you to the main library, which is the George A. Smathers Library. So if you go to the Smathers Library, you'll be brought to the homepage and this is where your search is going to start. Now, a lot of things um, that are not as well known is what do my UF fees pay for? The libraries is one of them. So the library has subscriptions to journal databases and archives that cost a lot of money to maintain as new material is cataloged every year. So your fees actually pay for this. So you might as well get your money's worth out of your fees, right? So one thing you're gonna do is you're here on the Smathers Library. It is important if you're off campus, which most of you are, to um, use the Cisco portal, uh, the VPN client, um, which you can download. And if you click on this link, off campus access, when you go to services, it actually gives you some instructions on how to use the UF proxy server, which basically gives you a secure connection and authenticates you on the UF network. So um, it shows you how to actually do that, how to get the software in place um, to be on off-campus networks. So I already have that in place. I'm going to go ahead and connect. Um, you're prompted for your Gator Leak credentials. So once you're signed in, you're kind of authenticated on the UF network. This is one way that UF keeps their library services available for their recognized users. Okay, but back on the home page of the library, you'll see on this page that we have um, basically a, pl a place on the page that says um, databases A to Z or databases and journals. It's in a few places. Um, you'll see it um, kind of at the bottom, online journals, databases down here. You'll also see it in tabs. They have it in a few spots. Um, they have something called OneSearch that just kind of searches everything. I don't tend to use that, I tend to use the databases. So if you click on the databases, this is where you're brought to online journals and databases A through Z. All a database is here is just an archive of journals, mostly in the liberal arts and sciences, okay? And there are literally over a thousand of them, okay? So we have all kinds of databases. Some of them specialize in medicine, others specialize in um, law, um, and some of them are very, very specific that keep archives of, of peer-reviewed articles for those areas. These are a few of my favorites. Go to the W's. You will find Web of Science. That's one of my favorites. You'll also find WorldCat, which is basically World Catalog. So these are some of the most extensive, it's called First Search, um, search engines to just search through academic archives. But let's go to Web of Science first. You're brought to Web of Science. Um, and this is an application that lets you search through all the archives. And you can simply put in your topic. Um, maybe you're studying um, delinquency and, um, and divorce, right? So you have to be kind of flexible with, with your search terms. Okay, so we'll just put delinquency and divorce in here, okay? Now, you have a lot of things available to you in your search. You have advanced search, which lets you choose which languages to do, what years to do. Maybe you only want things done in the last 10 years, um, more the current research, okay, and so forth. So you can set those, those search um, criteria in place if you would like. But essentially, we're just gonna hit search, and then it's gonna return all the articles um, that have something to do with those topics, okay, either keywords or, or what have you. And this is where you can start actually pulling forward these articles. Um, so this challenges of failed marriages and the implications for delinquency. This is a journal of sociology and social policy. The influence of family structure on delinquent behavior. 
youth violence and juvenile justice. Okay, so this shows you the title, the author or authors, the actual journal it's located in, volume, issue, pages, etc. Let's go to this first return. When you click on that link, it gives you the abstract of the article so you can look it over to see if it's one you want to select. You also have a button that says find it at UF, which basically says let's go try to find the full text version of this article, okay? Um, and sometimes you have to open the page in a new window just to prompt it. This actually is a PDF version of the article that I can download, I can copy, so forth, um, and, and decide if I want to use it for my research paper. Okay, here are a few tips and tricks that you might want to think about. So as you're kind of going through these articles, one of the things I do first is I go to the conclusion, right? I want to see um, what the article found out, what it's about, and see if it's on the right target. And then I can kind of go back through the article and see what else is there that's relevant to what I'm doing and if I want to include some of the things it found. So the two important parts to focus on are conclusion and findings. Um, one of the things I really like to do is look at the tables. I used to skip these tables because I didn't know what they meant until I took statistics, but I can actually get a really good snapshot of what these tables mean. They have betas, they have significance levels, they have constants and coefficients and variables. This is an OLS regression, which you are learning how to do in this class. So now I can actually determine what the findings were just based on the statistics alone. But again, you don't have to do that. You can go to the, to the written summary of what the findings were, the conclusion of the article, and make that decision. You're also going to notice that there are certain groups of researchers that tend to do this work exclusively on these kinds of topics. And you're going to start running into their names over and over and over again. Maybe the same journals, maybe the same team members on that study. And as you see that, you're going to hit what we call a saturation point where you're kind of seeing everything that's been done on this topic so you are probably at a good stopping point you don't need to keep searching the articles because it can be very overwhelming to say wow there's 5,000 returns on this one search Jensen do I have to go through all 5,000? No you don't you want to be selective and picking the ones that are most relevant to what you're after and you do need to read through them to determine what parts you'd like to cite and use as a basis and a background for your study I do encourage you to try to use current research. This was published in 2019. Um, so try to keep things within the last 10 years if you can, but there are some classic articles that are also very worthy to cite. Maybe they talk about theory or about what's happened over the last several decades, and those would be important too. But hopefully this kind of mini tour has, has been helpful to you. But let's go back to our search results from Web of Science and I'll show you um, how to use WorldCat. Again, very similar. Um, I'm gonna get out of Web of Science. Again, just an, an archive. Um, and I'll go into WorldCat. There are plenty of other archives that are very, very popular. You have JSTOR. You have Wiley. You have EBSCO. You have LexisNexis. There are so many, and they all kind of specialize in different things. Okay, so I could type in the words delinquency, divorce, I, and maybe I even know some of the articles or I've seen some of those authors. I could put those in. I could put a year like, you know, 2000 to 2019, hit search, and I'm going to get some returns on those as well. Now, one thing in WorldCat that is available um, is WorldCat lists all kinds of records. You have books internet sites, visual media, sound bites, computer, and articles, okay? You want peer-reviewed journal articles. That is the gold standard for scientific research because it's been put under scrutiny for the very best work that um, is accurate and reflective of the field as designated by other experts in the field. Books are not held to the same level of scrutiny, let alone our visual or other materials. So we want the journal articles, okay? So it has these little symbols that say, you know, this is an, an encyclopedia entry from Sage Publications. This is a book. It tells you which ones are available at University of Florida. You can request them. Like I said, I would stick to peer-reviewed journal articles that you can retrieve online and, and get a full text version, maybe in a PDF file format or an HTML format um, that you can use to develop your, uh, your story. So 
Um, Again, lots of databases, lots of ways to do this, but that's how you do the search. Yes, you could Google your topics, but you're going to get a lot of commercial traffic and not peer-reviewed stuff that is going to be distracting and inaccurate. So if you stick to a library database that is full of academic articles that have been peer-reviewed, held to those high standards of science and discourse, I think you're going to be um, in a much better place to get good research to provide evidence for why your study should be conducted. So hopefully you found this helpful. And if you have questions about other databases or some findings or maybe some creativity you need to use in your topics to get more returns, let me know and we can brainstorm together. See you later.